The highly anticipated Halo TV show dropped last week and fans of the games will have been looking out for many of the show's obvious easter eggs from the franchise. Fans will have noticed the easier ones, but more eagle-eyed fans have spotted more obscure ones, which many fans have so far failed to see. Today, we're discussing all the easter eggs from the first episode, which fans may have missed. Stay tuned. First up, it's The Phantom. As anyone who's played the games will know, the Covenant troops are hauled around the universe in their own purple ships, which are known as phantoms. Early in the episode, we see Quan Ha, who incidentally loses all her friends and family due to those pesky Covenant troops, as she notices one of the ships has landed. This is a direct reference back to the games, so watch out for more phantom ships going forward. They usually mean the Covenant troops are in the vicinity. Next, it's the Gatling gun. There are some superb weapons in the Halo game franchise, none more so than the good old Gatling gun. Again, the Easter egg involves our old friend Quan Ha, as she climbs up onto the back of a truck to fire the gun. We can also see the words Colonial Military Authority written on the side of the weapon. This is in direct reference to the group who preceded the UNSC, and there's a very high probability that the rebels stole it from them at some point. What did you guys make of the Gatling gun popping up early on? Let us know below. We're discussing a very familiar helmet now. Stay with us. As we know from the Halo games, military equipment and clothing is integral to the franchise, and troops do don't just stroll around in any old rags. They're kitted out with the best of the best, and at around 1320 of the first episode, we can see one of the Spartans appear on our screen. That Spartan is clearly wearing the helmet that we can use with the MPs in Halo Infinite. Pretty cool to see stuff we've used to play the game with, right? What do you guys make of the helmet making an appearance? The HUD is up now. Halo has been heralded as one of the greatest first-person shooter franchises of all time, and whilst the TV show is isn't necessarily filmed in this format, we do actually get a little first-person action to remind us of our favorite game. At Master Chief's HUD, we see the screen change to a first-person format, which also shows a health bar, mini-map, and a few other little bits and pieces. It's pretty cool if we do say so ourselves, and it's great to throw in a little piece of action which so closely resembles the game. Bravo! Did you guys like this one? Next up, it's the classic shield low sound. Anything that reminds us of our favorite game is a win in our books, and around the 15 minute mark we see the Spartans doing battle with the Covenant counterparts. If you listen closely, you will hear the classic low shield sound we so often hear in the games when we've taken a big hit. Once we have heard the shield low sound, the familiar, comforting, recharging sound quickly follows, which is great. What did you guys make of this one? Let us know your thoughts below. We have a Cortana line now. Stay with us. Around halfway through the episode, at about 2125, one of the Spartan soldiers comments on the fact that the cave they're in does not appear to be a natural formation. At this point in the TV show, we are yet to meet Cortana, Master Chief's AI, but this line is a direct reference to Chief's helper from the very first game in the franchise. She says the line in the game, and the Spartan soldier uttering it is a direct reference to the game, which changed everything for first-person shooters. What are you most looking forward to seeing in the TV show from the games? Let us know below. We're talking about the Prophet of Mercy next. Don't go anywhere. Remember Remember the three members of the Covenant High Council from the games? Well, at around 2823 in the first episode, we meet the oldest member of the Council, the Prophet of Mercy. As we know from the games, the Prophet is more than 200 years old and zips about on his cool gravity throne, which is something we really want to have a go of, and we can also see his throne in the scenes as well. Who is your favorite member of the Covenant High Council? Let us know in the comments. Miranda Keys and Dr. Halsey are stopping by now. If you think back to the game, you will remember that that Miranda Keys is actually Dr. Halsey's daughter, but the idea that the pair share any sort of loving relationship is pretty far from the mark. The TV show hints at the pair having some sort of history, but when Miranda is mentioned to the doctor, or vice versa, their reactions suggest they're not close to each other whatsoever. There's a pretty obvious example of this at around 2625 of the first episode, when Miranda is mentioned to Halsey. What do you guys make of this one? Something a little different now. Stay with us. It's not just Halo specifically, which is referenced in the Halo TV show, believe it or not. At around 24 minutes, there's actually a reference to the Mass Effect game series. We hear a voice say, Commander Shepard, you are requested at the Skillian Response Center. Of course, we know that Captain Shepard is the 
game's main protagonist, and Skillion is the reference to the Skillion Verge, where the Blitz took place. It's pretty cool when shows and games reference each other, and shows the creators are not scared to give nods to things which have clearly influenced them. Good job, guys. We've got a yummy treat next, stay tuned. Of course our heroes need some pretty serious sustenance to power them if they're off fighting battles around the universe, and what better than some tasty burgers? We see yet another easter egg featuring Quan Ha at around 40-45, when she is eating a burger. This is more than likely a MOA burger. If you think back to the game, MOA is pretty much a space ostrich, and you can even get a taste of the flavor for yourself. To celebrate the Halo franchise, Pringles actually released a MOA flavor, which we can reveal tastes like, wait for it, a hamburger. Did you try the MOA flavored Pringles? Let us know below. Captain Key's complicated relationships up next. As we know, Keys and Halsey fathered a child, the aforementioned Miranda. We also know that much like the games, Keys has next to no involvement in her daughter's life, which is a shame. What do you make of Keys and Halsey's lack of involvement in their daughter's life? Let us know below. It's the Mizraya Armory next. Stay with us. Toward the end of the episode, we see our hero Master Chief disable the communications computer on his spaceship. If you look even closer at the corner of the unit he's working on, you can just make out the logo of the Misraya Armory. As you will know if you're a fan of the games, the group are weapons manufacturers that the soldiers in the game regularly use. This again is a direct reference to the games, which is pretty cool. And finally, we're discussing the Chief removing his helmet now. Master Chief himself, Pablo Schreiber, has stopped by to discuss possibly the biggest conversation piece from the first episode, Master Chief removing his helmet. As of now, Chief has never before revealed his face in the game franchise, but Schreiber says he feels as though it was necessary to show the character's human side. He said, from a show standpoint, Spartans take off their helmet and take off their armor all the time. In the lore of Halo mythology, there's no rules against it, like there are with the Mandalorian. But some fans believe that just like Gordon Freeman of Half-Life never talking, Chief should remain faceless. They have argued that the character keeping his helmet on is integral to the lore of the franchise, and some fans went as far as to say they were shocked and saddened that Chief had revealed his face. Others said that giving a face to the character diminishes the myth surrounding him and actually makes him seem less legendary. This is the one thing that the show appears to have gotten wrong, so far as many fans have said that if they absolutely had to show his face, then they could have kept it for later on in the season or made more of a build-up to the moment. What did you guys make of the Chief revealing his face? Let us know your thoughts below. As always, thanks for stopping by today, and remember to join us next time for some more fun revelations. Also, why not do us a favor by liking and sharing today's video, as well as subscribing to our channel if you haven't already done so. Bye guys!